Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Listen to the radio George Strait was singing Seashores of old Mexico It sounded so good Well, he's written quite a few books. One of them is A Primer on CO2 and Climate by Howard C. Hayden. This is a short segment. We're going to come back in a longer segment, finish up with him, and then take a few of your calls and recap some top stories, get a few things I haven't covered yet. Look, uh... I've studied history. I've studied the different climate changes. We know for 500 years they've been keeping pretty good records uh, in places like England, really 300. But we know that the Earth's changing all the time. The solar system's changing all the time. The moons of Saturn and Jupiter that were ice are melting uh, up until just a few months ago. Now the sun just cooled off, according to NASA and three other institutions that gauge its how much energy it's putting off. Can, can you elaborate on that and then get back into the uh, ice core, sir? Uh, sure. Well, let's, uh, the thing, uh, just to finish up about the ice cores, uh, what they do is they just uh, heat the, the ice core up uh, or a slice the ice core up, and then they measure the gas that's in it, and they can tell how much CO2 is there. But, uh, yeah, they, uh, the sun has varied uh, quite a bit over, over a period of time, and there's the the Earth's climate has varied a whole lot. Um, uh, <clears throat> well, excuse me here just a minute here. Um, the um, glaciers, for example, people talk about their, the fact that they're receding. Well, they have been receding uh, quite steadily since about 1750, which is a long time before we started uh, using fossil fuels. Now, weren't they receding for the last 12,000 years since the end of the last ice age? I mean, well, there, there were glaciers uh, to, into North Texas, I mean. But yeah, yeah, well, there, uh, it's, there's a long, long time. It was about 18,000 years ago when we were in the depths of the last ice age. Uh, but then we went through the Little Ice Age, and there was things warmed up and in the medieval warm period, which uh, some people deny the existence of, um, things were really quite jolly. We had nice warm weather and so forth, and then they cooled off in the Little Ice Age, and uh, that was uh, basically coincident with the uh, cooling of the sun, uh, and now they, this, it's begun to warm up, and the Little Ice Age ended somewhere around 1750. Uh, no. Exactly. Now, now you're one of the big experts on this, but I've interviewed literally probably 50 people on this subject. I've seen the great documentary they just put out in England, uh, you know, debunking. I'm trying to understand here, though, uh, I, I mean, if the science is so simple, how were they able to then engage in this hoax, and why did they decide to push this hoax? Um, well, it's, I, I'm not too good on human motivation. <laughs> I don't really under, understand human motivations, except some people are really driven by money. Uh, they're, um, the, the thing that people uh, are looking at is basically uh, computer programs. They, uh, they write computer programs, and they've actually got uh, uh, gloom and doom built into them. Uh, for example, uh, there was a, a recent paper uh, and I can't give you the exact details on this thing, but it was it was published, and uh, what it what it described was a, uh, a positive feedback system, whereby if we heated up the Earth a little bit by carbon dioxide, then that would kick in more water vapor into the air, and heat up the Earth a whole lot more, and we're heading for hell in the handbasket, and so forth. And so uh, uh, the one chap who uh, is really quite up on this thing studied that, and uh, he took part of their computer program and just threw some random numbers in, and uh, it it showed that their uh, that their program was guaranteeing a positive feedback. There was something wrong with their computer program, so uh, he wrote a paper and sent it to the journal that had published that particular article. 
and uh, they sent it on to the author, and the good news is that the author said, oh my gosh, you are right. So, <clears throat> anyway, uh, the, all of these scenarios about global warming are played out in people's computers, not in reality. That's the re that thing to be remembered. Absolutely, stay there. And I, I saw in some of the reports they would enter into the computer that it was the CO2 that supposedly had this effect and not the sun, and there would be two different you know, responses from what reality would have shown. Well, I appreciate our esteemed guest. Uh, he is uh, retired. 30-plus year professor, University of Connecticut. He's written quite a few scholarly works uh, on the environment, uh, a primer on CO2 and climate, the solar fraud, and uh, other publications. You can find out more by going to Amazon.com. His name is Howard C. Hayden. Uh, professor, Dr. Hayden, uh, I kind of got, got caught short there on the break. The point I was trying to make was this, and I'm just reading the scholarly reports, and seeing the news reports about it, so I'm a layman, so correct me. But say they'll have an ocean rising model, and then they won't even feed in all these other things like the sun and uh, even major weather patterns. They'll just feed in a basic equation of what will happen if you know uh, CO2 is released, and then they have it already built in the computer that CO2 will supposedly have enough of a climate driver to heat things up to make the ice caps melt, and then we're going to be flooded. Uh, I mean, that's an oversimplification, or can you break down how they build these models to show these uh, this disaster? Well, uh, well, one thing is they confuse the North Pole and the South Pole. Uh, the, thing uh -oh. that the thing that determines uh, conditions at the North Pole is primarily ocean currents, uh, and uh, for example, there was a there was a recent uh, warming, and a whole lot of ice just left in the in the Arctic Sea. And then uh, the ocean currents changed, and right away it came back. It was the fastest rise uh, known. And but the records are short; it only goes back to 1979. Uh, South Pole. Uh, let me give you the ski report from the South Pole. Maybe you have some skiers down there in Texas. <laughs> Uh, the uh, the ski report is two tenths of an inch of new snow and two miles of base, and the uh, the highest temperature ever recorded down there is seven degrees at the South Pole Research Station. The lowest temperature is 117 below. Now, the last I checked, the, um, uh, the melting point of ice hasn't changed. And so just exactly how does one presume that the uh, South Pole is going to melt? I mean, for heaven's sake. Well, also, they do real base things, like they will show polar bears on an ice flow uh, and say, oh, look, they're all going to drown. They don't have a habitat anymore. But just watching shows about polar bears and reading a few books to my kids over the years, I know that they'll swim 100 miles, they get out on those flows and hunt beluga and hunt seals, but the news said they can't swim, they're dead, global warming did this, and I remember reading adventure books, history books about people you know, investigating the South and North Pole, the Strait of Magellan, you know, hundreds of years ago, and how there were always giant icebergs the size of cities breaking off. I mean, that's what they do. It rains, it puts more onto the glaciers, then they go out to the sea and break off, but but I guess I'm, I guess polar bears can't swim, and glaciers have never had icebergs. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> well, <clears throat> let me say something about uh, about the bears. Um, they have um, uh, survived uh, actually very well. And uh, for example, uh, the, the polar bears go back a long, long time, about 120,000 years ago, or something like that. There was another interglacial. And it was a good deal warmer than it is today, and uh, there was hardly any ice up anywhere around the North Pole, and the uh, polar bears survived that perfectly well at that time. I don't understand why they wouldn't under, they wouldn't survive it now. And in fact, the uh, the polar bear populations are not decreasing. I think there is one 
call it tribe of them that's uh, seen some decrease, but overall the total polar bear population has been uh, either holding steady or steadily or, or slightly increasing. Yeah, I saw a press report that they're coming further south and that their numbers are higher. I think it said 25,000 or something? Yeah, something like that. There's quite a number of them. And, uh, well, but, I mean, it's this type of mindless hype. Now, now since you really study what's happening with the sun, uh, and I see so different you know, all these different reports, but I remember five, six years ago seeing NASA reports about, look, we can see this moon's liquid sea of methane is melting due to the sun's increased output. Uh, can you specifically get into the sun as a driver, or is it the main driver, and what we've seen in the solar system, and is the sun now cooling, according to your studies, as NASA says it is?